Hi, in this video I'm going to teach you how to build a reverse Polish notation calculator uh, using uh, stacks and the interpreter design pattern in the Java programming language. So <clears throat> here we can see um, when we do calculations in a calculator there are different notations we can use. The one that we're all familiar with is infix uh, notation. On a simple calculator we can say 3 and then hit plus the operator plus and then the number 4 and then equals and we get a value. Uh, this isn't the only way a calculator can work. There are um, also there's there's also the Polish notation or prefix notation right where you can say plus three four enter and get the result and postfix notation reverse polish notation uh, where you would hit three four and then plus and there are several benefits to using reverse polish notation i won't go over them here in this video i'll point you to a computer file video uh, that that was done and it's an excellent video I'll put a link in the description box where you can learn more about um, reverse Polish notation if you don't know what it already is and its relationship to the stack data structure in programming. Uh, so let's jump right into our program and we will start to see how this is going to work. Okay. All right. So here I am in my IDE and it's actually. Um, so here is my main. This is simply the main, and what I want you to focus on here is not the command line method, but the simple example method. We introduce our variables via this variable scope builder, and we basically say introduce a variable called A and give it a value of 2, and another variable B, give it a value of 2, and um, create this expression text in uh, RPN notation a b minus and then pass all of that into our evaluator call evaluate and print the results and let's see what our program does not surprisingly um, it returns a b minus of 2 and 2 returns 0 you can see that if we changed it to a plus it would return 4 uh, let's change b to 3 and use the power and so this would be 2 to the third power, which is indeed 8, which we see here, right? So how do we get to do all of this? Uh, I want to call your attention to our package hierarchy in our program. Uh, the first thing that I want you to notice is I have separated out a few packages here, the evaluation package and the operators package. Let's start with what an expression is. This is our interface, and this is sort of at the heart of our of the design pattern we're going to use, which is the interpreter design pattern, right? Our, uh, our, the expression interface has a single method on it called interpret uh, that will that takes no arguments and returns an integer. And let's see what um, in our program uh, what all of the expressions are: divide, minus, multiply, number, plus, power, and variable. Okay, so let's start with some simple ones first. Let's see what does plus do. So plus is a class that implements the expression. It has two, um, so it takes two sort of uh, operands, and the uh, it, it itself is in the operator plus the class itself is the operator, and we can see here that uh, we have a left operand and a right operand, and when we call interpret. All we do is we delegate to each one of the um, expressions that the operand that uh, constitute the operand. We interpret them and then we call the operator that we're interested in. Here it happens to be plus, right? So if we look at minus, minus is going to look very similar. Uh, let's go to minus, and it's pretty much exactly the same thing. Uh, except that the operator here is minus, right? So um, let's take a look at one that's slightly more uh, complex. Let's look at divide. In divide, we 
have to uh, evaluate the numerator and the denominator and make sure that the denominator is not zero because obviously divide by zero does not make sense in mathematics. Um, and so here we throw an arithmetic exception if it is zero. Otherwise, we just return numerator divided by denominator. And, um, you know, this right now, I'd say, is a little hokey because if the numerator is less than the de denominator, you're not going to, you're going to lose that. It's not going to return a fraction. Um, you know, we could always enhance the program so that it works with fractions as well. Um, and, and also with uh, uh, things that don't divide cleanly. Uh, but, you know, I, I just did this for the sake of a tutorial. Um, so let's look at power. Power is a little bit more interesting. Power will uh, get the left and the right, and it'll say if y is less than 0, we don't support that, right? I, I didn't try bother implementing uh, raising a number to a, uh, to a power that is um, uh, less than 0. Um, <clears throat> in fact, I, I should probably, I could have probably enhanced it further such that it's not, um, it doesn't support fractions, but obviously that's not a problem here because each of these returns an int. Um, so you can see power, power just says if uh, the power, if the thing that we're taking the power to is zero, return one, otherwise it's defined recursively, return uh, that number times itself power impl times, right? So um, you can work that out here by yourself, but really power impl just keeps calling itself recursively until b reaches zero, each time multiplying a um, by itself, okay? Uh, so maybe one other one that might be interesting to look at, uh, variable, which just looks the variable up. Um, so so, right, so you can see what all of these sort of different operators do. Um, you might be interested in knowing how variable scope works. Variable scope just is a map, right? Um, we, and we also have a builder. Uh, we have a map where we take uh, the key is just the name of the variable and the uh, value is the expression that it maps to, right? Uh, so we will look that up and get the expression to be evaluated on the right-hand side. That's how we will get the variables, right? Uh, another thing that's interesting to look at here is the expression factory, right? This is what we call into um, when, so like, actually let's start from the top here. If we look at our evaluator, when, if you click into the evaluator, the evaluator We'll call this method called build syntax tree with the expression text and the variables. Ex uh, build syntax tree delegates to the expression factories create expression method. And here, this algorithm that I'm showing you here can be found on the Wikipedia page for. Uh, right here, the postfix evaluation algorithm for each token in the postfix expression. If the token's an operator, uh, pop operand two and operand one from the stack, evaluate the results, and push it back onto the stack. If it's an operand, push the token onto the stack. And then finally, uh, pop from the stack the final result. Okay? So um, here we go through and do exactly that. We will. Um, split the expression text using the uh, expression delimiter, which is just space, and we will um, take each of the tokens and push them onto the stack, okay? But we will call create sub-expression with that token in the expression stack. So you can see here, create sub-expression, we'll go through the token and go, is it a plus? If it's a plus, then pop the two operators from uh, the operands, excuse me, from the stack, and then uh, create the plus operator sub expression, right? That's what sub expression would be. And then return sub expression. So you can see we popped two from the stack here and then pushed it back on to the stack. That's exactly what was highlighted here. Pop, pop, and then evaluate the result and push right back on. So that's what we do. And then finally, uh, we call pop one last time to get the final result. That's all these methods do here. Okay? 
So um, you can see here we're just sort of using a switch statement and we're taking in the token and based on the token we'll either create a plus, uh, minus expression, multiply expression, divide expression, or a power expression. Or we'll uh, basically we will evaluate a, um, a variable. Okay? So really that's it. That's really all there is to it. Um, given that we use this design pattern, we can easily introduce a new operator, come up with your own operator, whatever you want it to be, and you can uh, add it into this program very easily. So I do want to get into design patterns a little bit more in these videos because I want you guys to um, know what design patterns exist. And, and, and sort of the pros and cons of each design pattern. In this case, you can see with the interpreter design pattern, it fits in perfectly into what we're trying to do. Um, and it allows us to extend our program uh, quickly and easily uh, in, uh, without having to do a lot of if-else logic, conditional logic in our code uh, to extend our program out. Okay? So uh, I encourage you guys to, I, I'll add a link to the, in the description box to the GitHub repository. I encourage you guys to download the source code and play around with it. Maybe add, consider adding your own operator. Uh, read through the code, step through it in the debugger. Maybe add more test cases. I only have like a couple test cases written out. Um, but I encourage you to play the, with the program. Uh, if you aren't already uh, deeply familiar with uh, either the interpreter design pattern uh, or stacks and why they are useful. Um, and yeah, please uh, do uh, like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.